Our Heavenly and Merciful Father, God, who loves us, thank you for giving us a wonderful chance to study Bible together with our brothers. The before that we were sinners, death to hell, but now we got saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are really thankful to the Lord. And as a Christian who got saved, we are willing to learn your will. So please open our heart in front of your word and please help us to uh, incline our ear uh, to listen to the, your word and please help us to realize what God's will is. So please give us the knowledge and wisdom so that we truly understand uh, the, your will and also your plan and also your grace. As a brother who got saved, we know that uh, we are very important the for church. So please let us be uh, the equipped uh, as a, the, the Christian soldier the, through the your word. And also please the let us be awakened spiritually and please let us uh, the grow spiritually so that the, we can be used by God as an instrument for gospel in church. And please uh, the protect our brothers the, from the, any kinds of difficulties and trials so that our brothers the, can be precious brethren the, before God and also our brethren can be used by God for gospel. The, this moment the, we are going to learn about the gospel of Matthew. Uh, so every time that we are learning about this, so please teach us and guide us and please help us uh, to understand what should we learn and also please let us uh, obey the, what we will learn today. We hope the Holy Spirit is with us from the beginning to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Okay, let's open Bible. The Matthew chapter 12. Okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse uh, the 43. Uh, 43 to 45. 43 to 45. Okay, uh, let's read together. The when an unclean spirit the goes out of a man, the he goes through dry places, the seeking rest, and the finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. The when, uh, and when he comes, he finds it empty, the swept, and uh, put in order. Then he goes and takes with him the seven other spirits, the more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the spirit also be with this wicked generation. Okay, so we are going to learn about this uh, three verses, the verse forty-three to forty-five. So the, these the verses are very important uh, to understand uh, the important lesson. Okay, look at the handout, page one. Mm. The man's flesh is the house uh, which has the spirit. As people are living inside the house, the spirit is living inside the house, the body. However, the spirit is also like house, someone can occupy a spirit. The house in Matthew chapter 12 is the spirit. The Satan or Lord will enter inside that house someday. That's why the house should be the house which will accept the Lord as a master. So we are going to think about empty house. So this verse, the verse 44, that he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, the swept and put in order. So, so we are going to learn about this today. 
empty house uh, in this verse the house means spirit yeah. okay so the house means spirit in these verses yeah. so empty house so inside the house no one So no one there. That's why, uh, according to the owner, this house can be changed, right? So according to what Jesus said, who can enter? Our Lord Jesus or Satan? The devil. According to the owner, this house will be different, right? Now, this is a very important lesson. Through this topic, we come to know that the real Christian and also just religious people are different. Why? Owner is different. So according to the owner, because uh, lifestyle is different, right? That's why uh, house style also will be different. For example, uh, one man uh, the bought one new house, but that man is musician. Uh, musician. He has many the music instrument. Then how about the, his house? Please think about what will be inside. Because he is a musician. Maybe inside his house there are many music instruments, right? Or electric guitar, or the violin and piano, right? Because he is a musician. And uh, another owner is an uh, artist. He likes to draw. He bought the one house. So if you visit in his house, what is inside? Well, drawing books, right? And also many, the painting, right? And the brushes. So according to the lifestyle of owner, house also will be different. Do you understand? Like this, our body is also a house. According to the owner inside, our lifestyle are different. That's why real Christian, religious people cannot be same. Why? Owner is different. At the time of Jesus, the religious people, who was owner of their life? Devil, Satan. But the owner of real Christians is Jesus. Totally different, right? That's why among the member of the church, real Christian and also religious people are different. Because owner is different. This is what Jesus taught in front of religious people. Because they thought they were already got saved even though they were not saved. So to let them understand what their uh, condition is, Jesus explained like this way, very easy to understand, right? Aha, yes, it is true, according to the owner, house can be different. Yeah, this is a, a very important. So if the Lord is the owner of this house, this house will be filled with the godly things, right? And if this house will be occupied by Satan, this house will be filled with sins, right? Evil things. According to the owner, this house will be different. The Bible said this house is like... This is not... <laughs> Maybe this, this house is like a man, hmm? human being. Hmm? Yeah. So we should think about Akko. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. Also, after salvation, also, even though we got saved, even though we got saved, but if we don't serve Jesus as a my Lord, in my heart, evil things can be filled, right? Even though we got saved. 
So also this is very important to understand the condition of believers and unbelievers and to un understand about the good Christian life and the bad Christian life. Okay, look at the handout. Number one, our flesh is like the house. God created a man with the dust and he put the spirit in him. Yeah. So we can divide, right, the body and spirit. So it means that the body is like house, right? For example, the, if someone cut your hands and feet, then where is you? Even though, well, for example, you don't have a hands and you don't have a feet, only the body and head, where is you? What is a you? Body or spirit? Spirit, right? Even though I have no the hands and arms, and even though I don't have uh, the feet, still there is me, right? It means that I is spirit, not body. Body is just house. That's why if we die, what will happen? Our body will return to dust because body is just house. But our spirit will return to God who gave it, right? So what is more important, our body and spirit? Spirit. Yeah. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, look at the handout. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man to whom he had formed. So the flesh of man is like the house of dust. Yeah. So our body is house of dust. Okay. Uh, Job chapter 4 verse uh, 19. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay? Okay. Uh, so you may open your Bible, Job chapter 4. The Bible says our body is the house of clay. Job chapter 4, the verse 19. Verse 19. Okay, okay, let's read together. Please read your Bible, even though you have the Tagal or Sebano Bible. Okay, let's read together. Three, two, one. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before a moth? Then what is the house of clay here? The, our flesh. Huh? Our flesh. The body, body of man. Hmm? Body of man, that we call this a house of clay, house of dust. So, look at the handout again. So, when the spirit comes out from flesh, the flesh will be empty uh, house. Yeah. So, um, our body is like a house. So, also, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, please open your Bible. Also, this chapter uh, explains about our body. Is a house. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh, have you ever read the chapter 12? The, what is content of chapter 12? Mm. It means that all of you will be, all of you will, the all of you will get old, right? Mm. So remember when you are young. So about the getting old, the God Bible is explaining about this the, through the house, right? Because house will be uh, broken, right? Uh, little by little. Yeah. For example, if you build a house today, but after 30 years, so if you don't care, if, if, you, if you don't have a remote uh, renovation, so after 30 years, that house will be Broken, right? Easily. The, the little by little. Uh, the window will be broken and looping also will be the broken. The walls also will be broken, right? So we, the, if there is no uh, repairing and renovation like this, our body is like this. Hmm? Yeah. So uh, from, first, from verse 1, yeah. the verse 3, uh, very interesting verses here. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble. Yeah. The, what does it mean? How about the 
uh, old man. Now e is to the work straight, right? So easily they can fall down, right? Easily they can be trembled. So this is a condition of the old body hmm? before death. In the day, in the day, what kind of day? Huh? The almost day of death. Huh? When they uh, die, before they die, uh, this situation will come to old generation. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men the bow down, the when the uh, grinders cease. Uh, because they are few. What is a grinder? Teeth. Uh, teeth are few. <laughs> That's why uh, not easy to eat, right? So when uh, we are old, yeah. And those that look the, through the windows grow dim. What is a window? Grow dim. Eyesight will be dim, right? And verse 4, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of the grinding is low, what does this mean? Not easy to listen carefully. And sound will be low, even though big sound, right? Older generation are not easy to listen, right? Hmm. And the, uh, when one rises up at the sound of a bird, Old generation, what is the characteristic of old, genera old generation? Also here, yeah. so the one brother is senior citizen. Very difficult to sleep deeply, right? Yeah. Easily, old generation get up in the morning early, right? Yeah. So, also this is uh, the, what happened in old generation. And all the daughters of the music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way the when the uh, almond tree the blossoms, the, the grass of poor is their burden, and desire falls, fails, the four man goes to his eternal home. Eternal home. From the temporary home, spirit will be brought to eternal home, but two kinds of home. Eternal heaven or eternal hell? Eternal home. Our spirit will be brought to the eternal home. Hmm? Key point is where am I going, right? Yeah. From the temporary home. What is temporary home? Our body. Because our body will be dust. And the, the mourners go about the streets. The remember, verse 6, remember your creator before the silver cord is loosened, or the golden the bowl is broken, or the pitcher uh, shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Verse 7, let's read together. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Yes. So whenever we conducted the Bible seminar, you had listened to the verse 7 many times, right? But if you know this background, uh, more easy to understand, more clear to understand. So what is the meaning of verse 7? Yes, look, you are getting old. Your body will return to dust. That's why remember when you are young, before you will die, your spirit should return to God. Then you should live at eternal home, heaven or hell. That's why you should be saved. This is what chapter 12 says. So our body is like a house. Page 2. Uh, second paragraph. The flesh is the house of tents. Yeah, house of tent. What is tent? Have you ever seen tent? Yeah. Have you ever seen? Tent. The, uh, the permanent house, temporary house. Temporary house, right, for camping, right? Yeah. So in the retreat center in Da'ai, uh, because uh, many, uh, many, were, the many joined in retreat center, lodging were not enough. That's why many uh, brothers and sisters had used the tent to sleep the, for summer retreat. And after uh, 
uh, summary has been finished, what did they do? Uh, they uninstall, right? Why? Temporary house. So our body is like a tent. So flesh is the house of a tent in the earth. Yeah. Corinthians chapter 5. Please open your Bible. First Corinthians. Yeah. Uh, sorry, second Gorinthian. Uh, please put second. Second Gorinthian chapter 5, verse 1. Verse 1. Also here, we can see eternal home. Okay, let's read it together. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, that we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Yeah, there are two kinds of houses. The first, tent. The what is tent? Oh, our flesh. Yeah. So very good explanation, right? Ah, our body is like a tent. It means that not forever, not eternal, temporary. Our real body is in the heavens. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So body is like a house. Okay, uh, look at the handout again. So second appears at number 14. Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent. Or so Apostle, Apostle Peter said, I put off my tent. What does this mean? Someday I will die, right? And I will return to my real house. Where? In heaven. So he said, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Already Jesus had shown Right? Yeah. He died on the cross and he was resurrected, right? And he ascended to heaven. So he came out from the tent uh, when he died and when he resurrected. Uh, this is the example to us. Okay. Number two, we call the house where a spirit comes out a uh, dead body. So, what is the meaning of that? Uh, let's think about the concept about the death. death. Okay, well, do you understand, right? What that? I will remove. According to the Bible, the meaning of death, yeah. much better to know the uh, exact concept of death. What is the meaning of death? Separation. Yeah. Separation uh, between flesh and spirit. Yeah. Flesh and spirit. We call this death. Then what is the first death? Bible said there are two kinds of deaths, right? First death and second death. What is the first death? Separation between flesh and spirit about the death in this world. And what is the second death? According to the law, uh, sinner should be judging, and then flesh and spirit will be one again, right? Yeah. So there are two kinds of resurrection, you know? Resurrection of the righteous, resurrection of the evil, right? What does this mean? All sinners who are supposed to go to the eternal fire also will be resurrected. Why? They should be punished forever. So they need another kind of flesh. Why? They must not die there. Right? So the Bible said there are resurrection of the, uh, the evil, the resurrection of the righteous. All kind of sinners who are not saved will resurrect as a spiritual body. And it will be one and they will be brought to the eternal fire. We call this second death. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 8. Bible says, right? The Bible already explains who are going to eat the second death. We call this second death. 
So meaning is separation between flesh and spirit. So what is a flesh in the Bible? What is flesh? House, house. So if spirits come out from the house, we call this death. Okay? Yeah, we call this death. Uh, so uh, in English, the he passed away. Passed away. Where? And in Korea, if someone died, the we call we say like that. Uh, he uh, has returned. In Korea, if someone died, we are saying like this, he has returned. To where? To heaven or to hell, right? Hmm? Yeah. So, uh, so we should know about that. Okay, please look at the end out. James chapter 4, verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is death. Yeah. So this is the concept of the death. According to the Bible, biblical concept. Yeah, James chapter 2, verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead. Why there is no spirit? Because the Bible said spirit will return, right? To God who gave it. So according to the law, yeah, the spirit should be judging. And the empty house where it has no spirit is a dead body. So empty house will be brought to grave and it will be corrupt and will return to dust. And also number three, spirit who becomes empty house. The Matthew chapter 12 verse 44, uh, please open again. Matthew chapter 12 verse 44. Forty-four. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Uh, Jewish people try to live according to law and do good works and keep the law. Yeah, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Uh, okay, yeah, look at me. Uh, the first meaning we had learned until today, the empty house means the dead body. And also another meaning here, all the people who are not saved are called empty house, even though they are living. So the spiritually also we should think about more. So all the people who are not saved are like empty house. Okay? Do you understand? Why? They didn't accept Jesus Christ. Also we should think about like this way. Also this is what Jesus taught. So verse 44, then he says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. The Jewish people try to live according to the law and do good works uh, and keep the law. He finds empty, the swept, and put, it, put in order. It means that they don't accept the Lord of Spirit, and they became themselves the Lord of their life. So, they swept and put in order a house which is a spirit. The Jewish people had a passion to keep the law not like a Gentile. They thought that they are master of their spirit and do by their own power. The Pharisee in Luke chapter 18 is a representative of it. Yeah. So you already know about that. Luke chapter 18 verse 11 to 12. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Extort, uh, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector, I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. All kinds of religion are an effort of people who try to change themselves. Okay, page 3. The Jewish people swept and put in order themselves according to the law. However, they rejected to accept the law. Number four, house where seven 
devils or seven demons had entered. At first, only one unclean spirit had entered in this man. Okay, look at here. Uh, please, verse 44. Please look at your Bible. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. Uh, we should know the background here. Why Jesus said about that? Who was target to listen? Jewish people. Uh, Jewish people. So as you know, the, we had learned at Bible Academy, the Gospel of Matthew, who was focused? Jewish people, right? Jewish people. Because they had a misunderstanding about Jesus and about the, their spiritual condition. So Jesus should explain what their condition is spiritually. So their condition is like empty house. What does this mean? What does this mean? They didn't accept Jesus. But instead of Jesus, they had accepted devil. And also, uh, they tried to clean inside. So very clean. What does this mean? Effort of religion. But even though they try to clean themselves, can they be saved without Jesus? Even though they are praying, they are going to church, even though they are confessing every Sunday, then can their sins be washing? No. So Jesus had emphasized about that. Yes, you had clean your spirit, but what happened? Who entered? Even though they had clean, who entered? Seven demons. It means that even though they have religious activities, but without salvation, this is meaningless, instead of Jesus, more stronger devils will come inside. At first, when they, when they didn't have a religious passion, only one devil, right? But they had a passion in their religion. So after that, they became devout men in their religion. So more strong. So more difficult to be saved. Also, whenever we evangelize, we have the same experience. For example, someone is going to another church. He is not saved, but uh, he is not devout. Huh? Sometimes he is going to there, sometimes he does not. Go there because he has no interest in about their church. But inside him, is there Jesus or not? There is no Jesus, right? Like only one devil. Weak. So more easy to evangelize. But little by little, because they got lost the chance to be saved, little by little, they, the he, they became more close to their religion. So they had a passion, they are doing many things in their church, they are praying, they are doing many things in their church. So they became more stubborn. So instead of one unclean spirit, seven demons will enter. So at that time, more easy to listen to the true gospel or not? Not easy. That's why among the pastors who are not saved, not easy to be saved. Why? Already seven demons had entered. This is a condition of paresis at the time. That's why only few got saved among the religious people. Why? They already became stubborn. Because seven demons already had entered. Very stubborn. They don't want to repent. So who killed Jesus? Those who believe in God, right? Religious people killed Jesus. Because they were filled with Satan. That's why Jesus said, John chapter 8, Your father is the devil. Right? Your father is the devil. But they had in instituted. When were we born as a fornication of sin, huh? fornication of the devil, they did not accept that they were born as a sinner. Right? Let's look at Bible. This is very important. John chapter 8. So uh, if you have a time, 
uh, it's very important to listen carefully and read carefully chapter 8 verse 1 until last verses last verse you should read every verse in detail then clearly understand what is condition of unbelievers who are not saved among the Christianity because same condition very important verses here uh, Okay, look at here. Um, the verse 32. 31. 31. Because today we have enough time. I will explain more the detail. 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, yeah. believed him. Looks believers, right? Yeah, Bible says they believe him, but this faith is wrong faith. Wrong faith. How to know? Please read from 31. This faith is wrong faith, but looks believer. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And verse 32, let's read together. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why did Jesus say to them, if they got saved? They said themselves, I believe him. But, in fact, their faith was fake. They didn't know truth yet. That's why Jesus said, you shall know the truth. So whenever we evangelize, so you can meet the many religious people who are saying that, I believe in Jesus. But remember, not everyone who says, believe in, I believe in Jesus, can go to heaven. Not everyone. Because among them, someone has a wrong faith. Broken faith. That's why the Bible said, Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, looks believers, but verse 32, you shall know the truth. Why? They didn't know, right? Truth shall make you free. That means they didn't get saved. So Jewish people were angry to him. What? We should know the truth? We were not free yet? We already became free because we are children of Abraham. Yeah, this is the argument between them. Verse 33. Let's think about one by one. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Yeah, what does this mean? Why we should be free? We never been bondage. Of someone, it means that we are not slave. Oh, why we should be saved? Why we should be free? We are already free. What does it mean? I am Christian. I don't need to be saved. But why you said to me that you should be saved? You must be born again. I already, I am already Christian. I never been slave of sin. Okay, question. Did they know their condition or not? Did they know their condition or not? They didn't know, right? They didn't know they are slave of sin, right? Uh, please hold the chapter. Okay, Romans.
Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Okay, let's read it together. So that as sin uh, reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin reigned in death. What does this mean? Sin was king, right? Yeah, in English, the sin uh, reigned in death. It means that the sin was king who ruled over me, right? It means that who was slave of sin? Sinners, right? Sinners, okay? Do you understand? Sinners, chapter 6. Verse 16. Let's read together. Chapter 6, verse 16. Let's read together. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that once slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading, in, leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Here more detail. Verse chapter 5, the Bible says, Sin reigned you. It means that the sin was king to rule over you. In verse chapter 6, more detail, more clear to understand. You are slave of sin. This is a condition of sinners, right? So what does this mean? You shall know the, uh, you, the truth shall you free. Truth shall make you free. From what? From slave, right? So the, you should know the background. Look at me. Uh, what Jesus said at the time, as a slave, very easy to understand. You shall know the free. At that time, we should know the background. How can they say, when uh, can they say that I am, I set up, I set free? When? When slaves came out from the power of master. At that time, they said, I set free. The same words. Okay, do you understand? That's why the when Jesus said, Truth shall make you free. Then Israel people thought, why we are slave? Because only to slave, they can use this word. Truth shall make you free. At the time, they thought, from slave? Because slave need the freedom at the time. Okay? So they thought, why we are slave? We are not slave. It means that they didn't know who they are. Here, Romans chapter 6, we sinners... A slave of sin, right? Slave of sin. Verse 17. Apostle Paul said about the condition of sinners before salvation. You, you were slave of sin before. Verse 17. Let's read it together. But God, he, uh, God be thank, uh, thanked that the, though you were slave of sin. Yes. Please put here on the right. You were slaves of sin. Before you got saved, you were slaves of sins. That's why I just said, truth shall make you free. Verse 18. This is a result of salvation. Because Jesus said, truth shall make you free, right? So through the truth, what will happen? Verse 18. Let's read together. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. From what? You set free from what? From financial matter? From what? From sin. So at the time of Jesus Christ, in front of the Jewish people who believe in him, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. Truth shall make you free. It means that even though they thought that they believe in God, they believe in Jesus, but they were not free yet, right? 
from sin. It means that they were not saved yet. But they answered, Why we are slain? Let's return to John chapter 8. The one by one, very interesting and very important. Also, we came to know how to counsel newcomers here. Because this is counsel of Jesus. John chapter 8. So verse 34, uh, 33, so they answer Jesus, right? We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. It means that we were not born as a bondage. We were not born as a slave to anyone, right? They didn't know who they are. How can you say you will be made free? It means that how can you say that you sh must be born again? You must be saved, even though I am Christian, like that. Same, right? Their answer, answer of religious people in our time, are same. They don't think why they should be saved, right? Because they think that they are already Christian. Because they are going to church. Because they are member of church. Like that, we are member of Abraham. We have a membership. What kind of membership? We are descendants of Abraham. That's why all of us, we don't need to be free because we are already free because we are member of Israel. Like that. We, I am member of that church. I am member of born again church. So I am already born again because I am going to born again church. Same answer, right? So, verse 34, Jesus answered. This is a conversation between them. Then how to know? Uh, we can know how to evangelize religious people here. We can get a lesson. We can get wisdom. We should let them know who they are. If they don't know who they are, they cannot be saved. We should help them to know who they are in front of God. This is very important. The verse 34, very amazing answer and important answer, right, 34. Let's read together. Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. You are committing a sin now, right? You are committing a sin even though you are Abraham, you are descendant of Abraham, but how about sin? So whenever we talk with the religious people, no need to argue about the, their religious activities. We should just focus on sin. How about your sin? Are you saved? But how about your sin? You are committing sin every day. Then what should you do to solve your sins? They almost answer, ah, we should pray. <laughs> Even though they said, I already know eternal redemption, but if we ask like that, Answer is different. We should pray, we should go to church, we should serve the Lord. So they are believing, they are knowing, understanding are different. Why? They were not saved. So good question can make them uh, to understand more deeply. So asking also very important. Answer also important. So, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. And 35, let's read together. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But the son abides forever. Also, Jesus had mentioned about house here again, right? What kind of house here? Heaven. Eternal home. Hmm? It means that slave does not abide in house. What does this mean? Slave cannot enter heaven, right? It means that what does this mean? You cannot enter heaven, right? 
Okay, am I right? But sun can obey. Sun only can enter heaven. It means that were they son of God or not? Who are they? Slave of sin, son of God. Oh, please answer. Oh, please answer, brothers. How about the Israel people? Who are they at the time? Slave of sin, son of God. Slave of sin, right? But they had a misunderstanding that they are son of God. Okay, let's look conversation continually. So, verse 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, also this Son is Jesus Christ, right? Truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? Son. Who is the Son here? Jesus. And uh, uh, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free. So who can make me free? Religion? Jesus. My work? Jesus. My prayer? Jesus. Jesus, right. Yeah. These verses are connecting. They're very important. And verse 37, also Jesus continued to answer, Yes, I know you are a descendant of Abraham. I know who you are. Yeah, Like this. I know you are going to church. I know though you are a member of church. Oh, I know you are a member of a church. I know you are a descendant of Abraham. Verse 37. It means that Jesus didn't deny their physical condition, right? Because that is true. Yes, you are children of Abraham, but this is not guarantee of salvation, right? Yes, I know. Yes, very good. You are going to church. Yeah, very good, but this is not salvation. But uh, by mistake, sometimes we can uh, argue with them. Un unnecessary argument. For example, why are you going to there? That church is wrong. Something like that. No need to argue like this. Why are you going to there? We don't need to argue like that. Ah, you are going to there? Yeah, very good. Oh, every Sunday? Oh, very good. But how about salvation? Like, this is more... The wise and the case asking, right? Ah, do you are reading Bible? Oh, do you understand what you read? Like, oh, are you praying? Yes, prayer is very good. But can you go to heaven? Like that. Very wise answer of Jesus, right? Yes, I know you are children of Abraham. The very wise evangelist, right? 37, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but, yeah, this is a key point, right? But, but, you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. But, why you try to kill me? I am truth. I am the way. He said, truth make you free. Son, make you free. This son is me. But why you try to kill me? If you got really saved, why, but me, why you don't notice who I am? Right? For example, we can even do like this. Ah, are you going to church? Then do you understand what you read? Do you understand the meaning of salvation? Do you understand who Jesus is? Yeah, we can even do like, like this way, right? Oh. Before, even though I went to church, I didn't know clearly who he is. But through the reading of the Bible seminar, I clearly understand who he is. I hope that you can understand. Because we are going to church. If you understand who he is, much better. Like this. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Verse 38, I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Yeah. And the Israel people answered, yeah, 39, they answered said, and said to him, Abraham is my, our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham, works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. For example, 
The real meaning of children of Abraham is the Christian who has a face, right? Because Abraham is a descendant, uh, Abraham is uh, ancestor of faith, right? So, from the physical matter, little by little, Jesus had a focus on spiritual matter. Ah, you are Christian. But how about the real Christian life? Have you ever thought like this? Ah, you are Christian, but do you have a Christian life? You are children of Abraham? It means that you got saved. Then do you have a walk of Abraham? Are you Christian? Then do you have a Christian life? What is a Christian life? Have you ever thought? Attending church only? Like this. We can talk. We should think, we should let them think themselves. Yes, you are children of Abraham. Yes, then the, do you have a walk of Abraham? Read by read, more difficult, difficult question, right? They were not able to answer. Verse 14. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. Abraham did not kill Messiah. Right? Abraham did not uh, reject truth. You know, the, how did he get saved? Do you know? How did Abraham get saved? If someone asks you, how to answer? How did he get saved? Oh, who can answer? How did he get saved? Another question. Is he Christian or not? Abraham. Is he Christian or not? Galatians. Chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Here we can see the real children of Abraham. This is what Jesus mentioned. But Israel people had a misunderstanding the real meaning of children of Abraham. Okay? Verse 7. Let's read together. Chapter 3, verse 7, 3 to 1. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Mm. This, this is a real son of Abraham, right? Who are they? Real Christian who got saved by faith. Oh. And also, the Bible had mentioned about the faith of Abraham. How did he get faith? It means that how did he get saved? Verse 8. 8 to 9. Let's read together. And the scripture. The first thing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, A new old nation shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with the believing Abraham. Yes. How did he get saved? By choosing, by believing Gospel. Huh? By predestination or by listening, gospel. Huh? Please answer. If God ch chose Abraham as a, as a witness of God, right? This choosing is not salvation. No one can be saved by predestination, by choosing. We can be saved by listening through gospel. Abraham also, how did he get saved? Preach to him, right? What? Gospel. He had heard gospel. He knew Jesus. He had realized who Jesus is. That's why he had accepted Jesus. But Israel people said, we are sons of Abraham. 
So Jesus said, but why you kill me? Abraham didn't kill. Abraham didn't do that. Abraham accepted Jesus. But why you try to kill me? So work of Abraham, their work are different. Okay, do you understand? More easy to understand? Huh? Okay. So today is a good chance to know about that. Yeah. Okay, let's return John chapter 8 again. These verses are connecting. Okay, John chapter 8. Also through these verses, we come to know that the Bible has a unity, right? Come on, every verse is connected. So, verse 14. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. What does this mean? So, okay, look at me. What does this mean? Jesus said, If you are children of Abraham, but why you didn't do what Abraham did? What is what Abraham did? Abraham accepted Jesus, right? But why you didn't Jesus? Why you didn't accept Jesus? You say you are saying you are children of God, but why you didn't accept? Uh, you are saying you are children of Abraham, but why you didn't do the work of Abraham? What is the work of Abraham? Believing Jesus. But why you didn't do that? It means that their faith was fake, right? Even though they looks believers. So verse. 41. So they had argued again, right, to Jesus. Because they do not want to uh, uh, want to get a uh, get lost of victory, right? Against Jesus. They didn't give up. So verse 41. So through this answer, we come to know more clearly who they are. So whenever we uh, talk with unbelievers. Don't make them answer correctly always. This is a wrong conversation. Do you want to listen only correct answer from unbelievers whenever you evangelize? This evangelism is fake evangelism. This is not biblical. This is not normal. Almost listeners can answer wrong. If there is no real salvation, do not try to let them answer correctly. This is fake. Please look at the conversation between Jesus and Israel people. Jesus tried to make them answer correctly. No, Jesus tried to find out their real heart, right? Every answers of Israel people were wrong. That's why we come to know that who they are. How to help our unbelievers? We should know who they are first. And also we should let them know who they are themselves. But sometimes, some brother or sister bring newcomers. And they try to let them answer correctly. Sometimes, inviter help them to answer. Ah, eternal redemption, eternal redemption, forever. This is the best way to let them go to eternal fire. And also, someone has a misunderstanding. Oh, after counseling, oh, only my invitee had answered wrong, I think, bad counseling. I can understand why pastor didn't let them answer correctly. I think they tried to, they tried to make them answer correctly. This is a good counseling, right? But why pastor stopped counseling even though they had answered wrong? What do you think? What is a good counseling? Please look at the counsel of Jesus. What is a good counsel? We should let them know who they are. Then they can return to God themselves. What is a repentance? Drag, dragging them to Jesus by impulse? No. They should return themselves, right? 
We should help them to return themselves. This is true repentance. Can you repent instead of them? Can you repent instead of listeners? No. We should let them repent themselves, right? So sometimes uh, we can have a mistake whenever we evangelize. Because uh, we want to be hurried to make them real Christian. Yeah. But what is more important? Exact salvation is more important rather than fast evangelism. Even though it will take five years, ten years, what is the more best? Huh? Exact salvation, right? Before Jesus come. But uh, because I am hurried to make them Christian, so I just answer to them. I think that you are saved. You are saved. Oh, okay, no problem. Don't worry, because you understand, right? Oh. And also to another brother, and sister. Oh, brother, he understood. Oh, he understood. Then listeners have a misunderstanding. Oh. He said, I understand. Ah, I am clear because he said. So he relies on inviter. Inviter says, I am clear. So long time, he doesn't want to check his spiritual condition. And he returns tonight. But he will be left behind. Whose responsibility? We should think about carefully. What is a good evangelism? We should let them think themselves in front of God. So what is evangelism? Bring them before God, right? So they, we should let them stand up in front of God, not in front of man. God and He only. Then He come to know who I am. Then he can repent to God. Ah, I am a real sinner. So, even though answer of listeners are not clear after counseling, we cannot say that that counseling has failed. Huh? You know, even though they had a conversation with Jesus, no one understood at the time, you know? Then, teaching of Jesus was wrong. Counseling of Jesus was wrong. Can you say that he had failed? Can you say? No. So if we don't know about that, sometimes uh, we can complain easily. Even though we don't know the real background. You should be careful, especially among the brothers. I think if I have a counselor instead of the pastor, I can do more well. How proud am I? There is a reason why I am saying about that. If you think like that, it means that you are higher than Jesus. Look. Who repented at that time? No one. Then can you say that oh, if I had a, if I had talked with them, maybe they can be saved instead of Jesus? Can you say it like that? Yeah. We should be humble always. So, verse forty-one. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, yeah. So this is the answer of Israel people. We were not born of fornication. Did they understand what Jesus said? Did they understand what Jesus said? How foolish. Please think about it. Even though they have heard from Jesus directly, but they didn't understand. How can he judge preachers? How can he judge counselors? 
even they have heard from Jesus directly, they did understand. But because of the, this conversation, until now, we come to know that what condition of unbelievers, right? How important the lesson. If Jesus didn't talk with them like this, how can you know, how can you know that the condition of unbelievers, right? Even though listeners uh, is saying wrong, even though their answers is wrong, also this can be good counseling. Why? Inviter, preacher, and invitee come to know who he is, right? This is more good counsel. So, verse 41, you do the deeds of your father. More uh, strict answer of Jesus, right? Because they said, uh, we did the work of Abraham. So, they thought, we are children of Abraham, children of God. That's why Jesus said, yes, right, you do the work of your father. So, Israel people thought, yes, right, I am doing the work of God. Because they thought their father is God. So, like that. Yes, right, we were not born of fornication. Yes, yes, right, we are doing the work of my father. Because Jesus said, you do the work of your father. How wise answer of Jesus, right? And they said, we have one father. Israel people answer. We have one father. Who is he? God. Yes, right. We are doing the work of God. Please look at the religious people. They are saying that, yes, I am doing the work of God. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. We are instruments of God because we are doing the work of God. We are teaching Bible. We are giving baptizing. We are helping many people. We are praying. We are building church building. We are doing the work of God. Many are saying like this, right? But is this work of God in front of God? No. Verse 42. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. Jesus had mentioned about love. Do you know what is the difference between real Christian and religious people? What is the difference? Have you ever think? Have you ever thought? What is the difference? Knowledge? So in fact, religious people have more the much knowledge. Because they were educated. In the theological seminary course, right? But they have no love. They don't love God. They are pretend to love God, but they don't love God. They love the world. They love money. So look at the 16. Please hold the chapter. So yeah, look at me. From the doctrine, from the doctrine, the, what, is, uh, what was the way of the evangelism of Jesus? From the doctrine, he touched heart, right? Look, chapter 16, verse 14. Fourteen. together. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. What did they love? God. Words of God. Love money. They love. 
They had their own doctrine. They had a religion. They had a prayer. They did everything as a religious people, but they didn't have love. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 42. John chapter 5, verse 42. Let's read together. Okay, page uh, John chapter eight. So, uh, verse forty-three. Also, this is the answer of Jesus. Why do you not understand my speech? Yeah. So, how about their condition? So, did they understand what Jesus said? They didn't understand. Okay? So, so whenever we evangelize, uh, that we should do our best. But no need to have a disappointment easily, even though they cannot understand. Especially, that is natural. Because many things already are, are full inside. So until they throw away everything, they cannot be saved. That's why we should help them to listen again, again, again with love, with endurance, okay? So whenever they listen, even though the answer is wrong, what should we do? Why you answer like that? Should we push them like that? Should we be angry to them? No. Ah, thank you. Even though during counseling, the answer was wrong, ah, no need, don't, have a, the, don't have a bad feeling to him. They can feel, oh, my answer was wrong, that's why my inviter was angry. Oh, I cannot come here again. Maybe he will be angry again whenever I say wrong. Then how can they have counsel? Even though answer is wrong, what should we do? We should give huh? the thanksgiving, right? <sighs> Thank you, Kayo. Thank you for coming. <sighs> I'm very happy because you are here. I want to you to come here again and again. Don't worry, don't worry. If you listen again and again, you can be saved. But inviter is angry to him. Why your answer is wrong always? I'm very shy to preacher. I'm very shy to counselor because your answer is wrong. Then how can they come again? Right? This is wrong. Uh, evangelism. So verse 44. After 43, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Okay. So whenever we have lies, if we notice that they don't understand, then instead of disappointment, we should give thanksgiving to God. Ah, thank you, Lord, because I can understand who they are. Right? Thank you, Lord. I can notice, I can realize who they are now. Then, next time, we can evangelize more wisely. Okay? Yeah. Verse 44. Okay, let's read together. This is a very important, right? 44. Okay, 3 to 1. You are of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because, for 45, but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Wow, how amazing answer. Verse 31, please look again. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, but verse 45. I, I, am, I am telling to the truth. I am telling the truth. You do not believe me. 35, 31 are different, right? What does it mean? Faith was gone away? Or they didn't believe? They didn't believe. But why God wrote like this way? Why the John Apostle Right this way. Yeah, how wise, right? The Apostle John wrote, uh, uh, 
John the Lord 31, Jews who believed in him. But he wrote 46, uh, uh, 45, you do not believe me. This is what Jesus said, right? Inside of men, even though they look believers, right? They believe me. This is a word of another, right? But Jesus said, you don't believe me. Even though many are saying, yes, he's Christian. Even though he is saying himself, I am Christian. But what is more important? What does God say? What will God say for you? What will God say about you? This is more important rather than what I am saying, right? Huh? Rather than what another are saying, right? We should think about what God is saying. Matthew chapter 7, uh, not everyone says the Lord, Gino, Gino, Lord, Lord, cannot enter heaven, can enter heaven, right? Not everyone can enter heaven. Lord, I did it. In the name of the Lord, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who protects loneliness. Even though they said, I know you, I did it. In the name of the Lord, but Jesus answered, I never know you, who you are. Who are you? I know you. I don't know you. What is more important? We should be known by God. Hmm? Many are saying, I know God. Many are saying, I know Bible. But if God say to them, I don't know you, then they can enter heaven, right? Hmm? We should be known by God. What does this mean? We should be saved first. We should be children of God first. From Slave of sin. This is what Jesus taught. But Israel people didn't understand. Because they liked the darkness rather than light. Huh? According to what the Bible said. How same? Our generation is same, right? Very, very same. Many are listening, but only few got saved. Because many love darkness. That's why the gospel cannot be shined in their heart. Okay. Okay. The page, because another page is uh, very easy to understand. Okay. Do you understand what we have learned now? Okay. So, their condition is like an empty house. Why? They didn't accept Jesus. Instead of Jesus, who is inside? Devil. This is a condition of religious people who want to see. Okay, so page three. Uh, number four. House where seven devils had entered. At first, only one unclean spirit had entered in he, this man, but he tried to live according to the law with passion. This is religious activities. So dirty demon came out and had wandered at a place where the Holy Spirit does not walk and there is no word of God. But he was not able to find the place where he wants to stay. So he had returned to his old house that the house was already clean and repaired. What does this mean? They had the religious activities. So it means that the Satan like Christianity, you know. Jesus was killed by religious people, right? And Christians were killed by religious people. And Christians are being persecuted by religious people, right? Satan likes to use religious people because they have passion to clean themselves. That house was already clean and repaired, but there is no honor of house. It means that they had a religion, but they didn't accept Jesus. The, this house was empty house. So he brought wicked more seven other spirits so that they stayed there. Yeah, Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Then they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is rose. Worse than the first, 
So shall it also be with the, this wicked generation? Uh, one sister had experience another church. So he had evangelized one classmate when she was a college student, but uh, she was not interested. And also, the sister also, uh, according to the, her testimony, he uh, gave up easily because he was not interested. Because he, he, was, he didn't like to go to the church. He does not want to have a religion. But after several years, she, the one sister, had heard that, the sister had, the sister had heard that, that classmate is going to church, another church. So the sister had planned to meet with her to evangelize. Oh, she's going to church before. She didn't want to go to church, but oh, she's going to church even though that church is not real church. That's why the sister thought, ah, more easy to evangelize because he is going to church. So she met with her. She evangelized. But instead of interesting, that classmate persecuted the sister. No, I will not go there. I have my own church. Even though he does, she didn't know what salvation is. More strong, right? Like seven devils. So whenever we have a chance, we should do our best. If we don't do that, Later, they will be filled with devils. Why? The Satan does not want many are going to heaven. The Satan is making many people as a slave of him. That's why evangelism is a spiritual battle. So if we are lazy to do, at the time, while we are lazy, many will be slaves of them. The more difficult to evangelize. Even children, even though you are easy to control children now, but if they get lost the chance to be saved now, and also if they don't listen to the words of God from now, later, if they are influenced by another religion, they will be stubborn. Parents cannot control. I have seen about that many times. Satan is moving now. Satan is walking now. So Matthew chapter 12 verse 45. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. More wicked, more wicked. Better than one spirit. One, the uncle spirit. They enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first. More worse than first. So at first, uh, she was uh, not uh, uh, stubborn and more easy to evangelize, but because of laziness, if we get lost the chance to evangelize, they will be stubborn later. And we have experience, right? That man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with his wicked generation? The Israel people said themselves that they are holy children of God who had the law, but they did not accept Messiah whom they were waiting. They became more corrupt rather than before. Jesus come to this world. Finally, what happened? They crucified Jesus on the cross. At first, they just had rejected him. But later, what happened? They had killed Jesus. More worse, right? Rather than first. Satan is using the religious people. Okay, page four. So there are demons in uh, shamans, the shamans, like uh, sorcerers. Hmm? The look at a man who had been demon possessed and had the legion. How wild is he? And he did not close and broke chains, and he lived at place of grain. So legion is uh, more many groups of devils, right? So he was demon possessed according to the Bible. So he had the power. He broke chains and he didn't wear clothes, right? Not easy to control. So like that, if we just leave many people the without evangelism, among the family also, they will be stubborn later. Not easy to control. Like a one man who is demon possessed. 
No one can control. The Bible says no one can control him, right? So whenever we have a chance, whenever they are willing to listen, we should help them to listen. Because chance is not forever. But because of laziness, because of the disappointment, huh? because of the hidden sin, if we get lost to chance, whose responsibility? Not only their responsibility, but also, also responsibility of Christian who had a chance to have been lies. Number five, he accepted new honor in empty house. Mm. After Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm chapter 24, verse 7 to 10, lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Inshallah. So who should enter in us? The Jesus, right? Yeah. We can get several uh, the precept lessons in these verses. First, it might mean that the Jesus enters through various gates with glory in Jerusalem, and another meaning is more clear understanding. It is that the Lord enters at the doors of people who are willing to accept the gospel. It, shall, it has been described glorious, uh, glorious, gloriously here. Yeah. Uh, salvation means that the sinners open the door of heart and accept the Lord in their heart through listening to the gospel. So, Majino, don't have misunderstanding. Uh, Jesus cannot enter in heart by accepting prayer, right? So later, the, if we have a chance, the, I will explain about this more detail. Okay? Uh, so no one, can, uh, no one can accept Jesus Christ by praying. How can we accept Jesus Christ? Accepting Jesus, correct meaning, but way is wrong, right? Why the many have a misunderstanding about that? They have a misunderstanding the way to accept Jesus. They believe that they can accept Jesus by prayer, right? But According to the Bible, how can you accept Jesus? By listening to the gospel. By listening and believing the gospel. Shortly, to understand, Ephesians chapter 1. Much better to memorize several verses to understand about that. that whenever you have a chance to evangelize someone, uh, these verses can help you. Uh, the later, I will make also another chance to explain about this detail. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Why accepting prayer is wrong? Chapter 1 verse 13. Okay, let's read it together. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah, what is key point here? Hearing and believing and being sealing, right? Being sealed. In fact, what is the correct uh, mention? Accepting Jesus and Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming is more correct explanation. Also, we can say we accepted Jesus. Accepting meaning is believing. If we listen and believe in the true gospel, sorry, Jesus Christ will enter as the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we call this Holy Spirit has been sealed like a stamp in us. So what is the key point here? Uh, you heard right. Heard, please put on the right. Heard, hearing. What should we hear? Not every words, uh, not every word save you, right? We should hear gospel, gospel. The word of salvation, Acts chapter 13, the word of salvation. We call this gospel. And first Peter chapter 1, 25, through the words of God. The gospel, right? The gospel, good news. 
Hearing the good news and having believed. Please put under why. Hearing and believe. Without hearing, no believing, right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the words of God, right? So hearing, believing, then you should read carefully. The English is also very clear. Hearing, believing, who should you do? Who should we do? Uh, who should do? We, right? We should hear, we should believe, right? But entering, who did it? Who do it? Me and God. Who will enter? Me and God. For example, if we call Jesus to enter, then he will come? No. He never come to me by calling. By believing. If we believe in gospel, at that time, even though we don't do anything, actually we don't do anything, right? He will come. Even though we don't feel. Even though, for example, I believe in gospel today, I'm very tired. So without prayer, I sleep. Then Jesus didn't come yet? <laughs> Please answer. For example, I listen to the true gospel now. So I believe, oh, my all sins have been forgiven. Oh, I can go to heaven. But very tired. So after I believe, I am asleep. So I am sleeping now. I didn't pray. Then Jesus didn't come? He came to me or not? He came, right? Because I believe. Condition is calling, praying, or believing. Believing. Okay? Do you understand? When we believe, you were sealed. You were sealed. I will seal. I am sealed. Uh, different. Totally different, right? I seal. I am sealed. I am sealed. By whom? By God, right? What will be sealed? Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Bible said, if you read John, after ascension of Jesus, Jesus had promised, after I return to heaven, I will come to you again as the helper, right? Who is the helper? Spirit of Christ, he said. What is the Spirit of Christ? Holy Spirit. Okay, do you understand? Not by me, but by God. That's why John chapter 1, whoever believes in the name of Jesus, right, will be children of God, not by blood, right? Or not by flesh, but by God. By God, by God, by words of God, by Holy Spirit, not by my work, by God. Well, how correct, right? How clear. But many don't know about their problems. And also another verse. Chapter 3, verse 17. 17. Let's read together. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Then you being rooted and grounded in love. So this can help you to be clear. Christ may dwell in your hearts. Oh, there also there is also choir, right? Jesus is coming in heart. How to come in? By my work? Or by faith? By faith, right? By believing. Not prayer, right? In faith, in faith. If we believe in true gospel, even though I don't notice, even though I don't know, right? Even though I don't know whether he came to me or not, did he come to me or not? He already came to me. Key point is, who entered? Me or God? God. God already had entered. So after salvation, little by little, we come to know that Jesus is in me, right? Am I right? Ah, in my heart, there is Jesus. Even though I got saved before, right? He already came. Hmm? Yeah. So, you know, 
real Christian can notice Holy Spirit is in us that not, not only according to the words of God, but also according to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, right? Because there is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the, those who rely on accepting prayer, what do they rely on? They are prayer only. Pastor, I had accepted Jesus by prayer. Only they rely on what they did. But they don't know what is the result of the Holy Spirit. What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? Just they rely on what they pray at the time. So, looks same but totally different. Hmm? So, what is the key point? Hmm? What, what is the key point? How does, how, can, how does Jesus come in us? By accepting prayer, by listening and believing in gospel. By listening and believing in gospel. Okay? Do you understand? So, uh, we should be clear about that. So, entering house also. Hmm? Yeah. Satan can enter and Lord can enter, right? Yeah. So, the, the who will enter? This is a key point. Okay, so last paragraph, page 4. Why don't people accept the Lord? And uh, after they accept the Lord, why they don't serve Him well? Because they still don't know well who He is. Okay, next page. Okay. So Psalm chapter 24, verse 8. Who is the, this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. The Lord has taken a win against the world once to enter in us. Not only he wants to enter in us, but also he will enter as king who took a victory. So he wants to rule over our hearts and makes us take a victory in our life. David accepted the Lord in his heart and he considered the Lord in everything. So he became the one who took a victory in his life. When the Lord returns, he will let us pass the gate of the eternal heaven for us. Yeah. Okay, number six, house became new totally with a new owner. If owner of a house is changed, inside structure and outward can be changed. Like this, if the Lord is accepted as owner, the Lord will dress the body, soul, and spirit newly. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, not only heart, spirit, soul, but also our body will be changed, right? For example, if you show the, your former pictures here before you got saved, maybe some brother has wrong hair, some brother has um, colorful hair, right? And some brother were the drunk. Huh? Anyway, shape are different. Huh? They're very shy to show, right? Yeah. So, but after salvation, our appearance are being changed, right? For example, some brothers uh, like to use... Uh, a fingering or a necklace or a earrings, right? Even brothers. But after they got saved, after they are joining fellowship, they can feel guilty. Ah, oh, this is wrong. Only me? <laughs> Only me? Oh. So little by little, I, want to, I don't want to use anymore, right? Like this, our appearance has been changed. Also, sisters also. But well, even though someone got saved, because they don't know where, so sometimes they use her pants, but she nothing, only me. And also she can feel guilty. Ah, what's well, better to use long pants? We can know what is a proper dress code, right? As a Christian, our conscience knows. That's why we are being changed. We are being changed. All things passed away. You became new creation. Why? New owner entered in my house. That's why new owner will change. That's why even though someone said that I am saved, but there is no change, this is wrong. This is not biblical. We don't know 
what happened? We cannot say more easily whether they got saved or not, but this is not biblical. This is true. Why? Bible said you became new creation, then new life can start. Because owner was changed. Right? Jesus said you were slave of sin before. But now you are slave of righteousness. Master is changed, right? Owner is changed. So as a Christian, how can we live as an unbeliever long time? We have a question. Is it possible according to the Bible? Please answer yourself. Because the Bible says we became new creation. But how can we live like unbelievers? It doesn't mean that we are perfect. We are not perfect, right? Yeah. But if we got really saved, we are growing. We are, the Jesus Christ can be formed in our life. Little by little, our words, our deeds, our behavior are being changed. Little by little. Right? This is a work of the life, right? Yeah. This is what Jesus taught. But heresy, they will not change. That's why Jesus said. Yeah, this is very important. Number seven, new owner makes spirit new. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, for example, about the rental house, the, the residents had transformed, not transformed to another place. So new uh, the owner, the boat, that house, so the new owner came to that house. Then the owner want to change, right? Oh, I don't like this style. So they can remove some tires, right? And they can repaint. I don't like red, I like blue. The house can be changed. Then another neighbors can notice. Oh, why that house is changed? What happened to them? You know? You don't know? Owner is changed. Ah. Oh, the former owner was gone away. Yes, he had transferred to another place. He went to Manila. But another new owner came here. That's why house was changed. Oh. Is he Christian? Yes. How to know? He's changed. He's not like before. Another cannot this. If owner is changed. Hmm? That is true. So new owner makes spirit new and beautifies him. As the Holy Spirit dresses the earth newly, he makes our spirit new and beautifies our spirit. Yeah. Mm. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Yeah. First Peter, please open your Bible. The first Peter chapter 3 verse 4 3 and 4 let's read together do not let your uh, adornment be the merely outward arranging the hair wearing gold or putting on the fine apparel the rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. So before, many had focused on appearance, right? Beauty of appearance. But after salvation, we should focus on outward, inward. Huh? Inward. Hidden, hidden, what? Hidden person. Hidden person. This is a characteristic of Christian. Christian have a hidden person. Hmm? Spiritual person, right? Yeah. Born again spirit, right? Yeah. This is a real beauty. Right? Yeah. We should think about it. So next page. Page eight, uh, number eight, new 
owner manages the body, soul, and spirit. He will make our appearance also properly. He will make us to have a sense of shame and faithfulness. He will make us to be separated from sin. He will make our face to be bright and uh, show a proper life of Christian. Num uh, number nine, he will let us live newly. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, easy to understand. Number ten, he brings various treasures in house. Yeah. So if owner is changed, the things will be changed, right? Yeah. So before. The Satan brought sins. But now the Holy Spirit will be holy things. That's why the Christian can be holy. And Christian does not want to be dirty. Right? So whenever we commit a sin, easily we can feel guilty, right? How can Christian enjoy a sin? How can Christian continue to commit a sin? Bible says Romans chapter 6, certainly not. How can Christian commit a sin? As a Christian who are under grace, Bible said, certainly not. It means that, according to original translation, how can we continue to commit a sin? Continue. It means that we can commit a sin, we can make a mistake, but Christian cannot continue to commit a sin intentionally, continually. Hmm? Oh. The Christian cannot commit a sin uh, intentionally and consciously, right? Habitually. Yeah. Bible said, certainly not. You know, why this is important? Why Bible said Christian cannot continue to commit a sin consciously, intentionally, habitually? Because if someone is, uh, if, if someone continues to commit a sin, even though there is a God's warning, to stop that sin, God will kill them. That's why sin of Christian cannot be continued. You know? But unbelievers can continue. Why? No need to give chastisement. Why? They will go to the eternal fire. That's why the Bible said, if there is no chastisement, if there is no discipline, you are not son of God, right? That's why Christian cannot continue. Because there is God's control. There is controlling of Holy Spirit. Yeah. So this is a very important lesson we should think. Eleven, those who have a spiritual things in their spirit can benefit on other people by sharing spiritual things. Okay, next page. Twelve. What we don't accept him as a Lord and what we try to rule over everything are wrong. Yeah. So it means that after salvation, we should let him uh, rule over my life, right? He is my master. Yeah. I must not rule over my life. Yeah. So Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And please have a, uh, don't have a misunderstanding. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 is for Christians who already got saved. Okay? Yeah. So because of this verse, many wrong teachers are teaching, yeah, look, we should open our hearts. Then he will come. This is wrong teaching. Okay? Because Revelation, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, who are receiver? Churches, right? Churches, churches. As a Christian, if we don't close my heart, Lord cannot have a fellowship with us, right? Huh? So this is a what uh, condition of Christian who close their heart before God. So don't have a misunderstanding. So, who is the owner of my, our life? This is important, right? Because my body is a house. Then we should think about who is the owner of my house? Or money? Or sports? Game? 
the girls, woman, which is think about who is owner my house, right? According to how, uh, according to owner, my house will be changed like this. According to owner in my heart, yeah, my life also can be changed. Okay, yeah, also we can get this lesson. Yeah. So, conclusion. The lesson from empty house in Matthew chapter 12 is telling us strongly that the Lord must be master in our life. Not only as a savior, but also as a Lord. Right? Mm. So to be saved, also we should accept Jesus as a Lord, right? And so to live as a Christian, also we should accept Jesus in my house as a master. So this is a what uh, Matthew chapter 12 uh, teach to us. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. Are you clear to understand? Yeah. So I think that not difficult to understand. Thank you for listening today. Let's all pray. Our heavenly and merciful Father, God, who loves us, thank you for giving us great chance to study Bible together with our brethren. Uh, who, are, who got saved in the name of the Lord. Today that we have learned about uh, the empty house, that we got saved by your grace, and also we can gather together to listen to the, your word, and also we have a uh, continued chance to live uh, for the Lord. So before you're coming, please help us to continue to live uh, as a good Christian who serve uh, the Lord as a master. So Lord, we know that your coming is very near. So please to use our brethren and brothers as an instrument for gospel. And please protect us from the wrong doctrine and from also, uh, trials and temptation. The so Lord, uh, please let us be united in the name of the Lord more so that our brothers uh, can be used by God as an instrument for gospel in church. Uh, thank you, Lord. We depend everything in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.